Hi, Steve Kaufman, Frank Dukes, nothing fancy, straight ahead. We're going to talk about things that are going on in, I guess, our trade. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about my books, about a couple of upcoming projects with Frank. And if you're wondering how come I'm not referring to him as Hanchi Dukes and he's not referring to me as Hanchi Kaufman, it's because, first of all, we're shooting Hanchi's World. And as you know, I'm very laid back. And I just get to the root of what it is I'm dealing with, okay? And the squawking in the background is tangled. My parrot, before the show is out, I'm going to bring him in and give him a cameo, okay? Pay attention to what we're talking about. You know where my head's at and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know who Frank Dukes is, okay? Frank, how's it going? Doing great. Pleasure to be here with you today. Okay. Uh, Recording for history, you know? You know absolutely. Let me tell you something. I, that was interesting, that thing you put up on Facebook for me. Okay, I really liked it. Took a picture, uh, you can see if you go to my Facebook page, of me in the kitchen without a shirt making breakfast, okay? With Tango, Parrot, there you go. So you mentioned his name, he talks, right? Over there, and the caption to the uh, picture was, Hanshi Kaufman exposed. <laughs> okay? And I, I won't tell you what Frank said, but like, you'll get a kick out of what he said. And as a matter of fact, it happens to be on the button. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that with you. Ah, Frank, we had a hell of a time at the WKU over yep. the weekend. I got another award for a change. And I'll tell you something, I, I enjoy getting it, okay? This particular one for you folks is um, most distinguished martial arts writer, philosopher, and teacher of our time. And uh, I, I really appreciated that. And I'm not going on an ego trip here. But we went there for two reasons. One, to meet our friends, mm -hmm. and the other was to celebrate Kathy Tassitano. Joseph yeah. Kathy Tassitano, I'll tell you, the World Karate Union uh, that Kathy put together, this was the 19th gathering, mm -hmm. okay? What a job. We stayed at the Chateau in, uh, in uh, Tannersville. Love it. That's had a hell of a good time, okay? By the way, for those of you who don't know where Canada's that's in the Poconos. Uh, right, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so about 10 miles, 15 miles past the Delaware Water Gap going west. Anyway, what's happening? <laughs> what's this pretty straight ahead? Uh, we're going to keep away from the politics of did Frank do this, did Frank do that. Who cares, Ren? Let me just say something. I know Frank for a decent amount of time, okay? Mm -hmm. I know when somebody's blowing smoke <laughs> or not blowing smoke. And why? Because I do, 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 I do my own due diligence and I checked it out. You know what? Frank says this happened. Frank says that happened. Take it to the bank. End the discussion. I don't want to be bothered with those kind of like situations anymore. Well, it's, it's ironic because the, the situation improved. I mean, here's how uh, I, you know, didn't fight anybody. Here's a bit more. USK World Karate, first black karate champion. Yeah. Uh, undefeated uh, in many cases in, in some of his, in, and when I say undefeated, I mean by, um, in the sense in the sense of certain certain uh, circuits he was fighting in. Not all, he's not undefeated through his entire yeah, career, yeah. okay. But he did fight, you know, Chuck Norris and defeated him, Mike Stone, Joe Lewis, um, Jim Kelly, uh, Mike Foster, who, who's a name lost to history, which I really find uh, troubling because so many young people don't know these names, like Mike Foster. Mike Foster, for those of you who know, was the American who actually took the title of uh, uh, away from the Japanese uh, in, okay. in karate and brought it to the United States, and he was defeated, of course, by by Victor Moore. Okay. Um, you know, so there's a great amount of history, and these are great. Figures of martial arts who all talked about me, 
uh, just uh, you were out to dinner, for example, with me and Alan Goldberg, and, and there was a gentleman. I was in, I was always hearing about oak tree, oak tree. Oak tree. Man. Well, I didn't know him. Do, he didn't yeah. know. He, I didn't ever knew him as oak tree. So years and years going by, all of a sudden we see each other. Goes Demetrius, what are you, what are you doing? And it's Demetrius Edwards, and of course he was a very famous boxer in his day and kickboxer. I mean, he um, he's responsible for running, you know, uh, Mike Tyson's ribs in a, in a match. I mean. You know, so you know we could talk about that and a lot and other things. He's just a great gentleman. He's about 61 years old. Uh, you know, Amer part of American history in his boxing career and uh, PK career. Man has well over 300 matches. That's it. And you see, yeah, and you people for the most part don't even know the names that we're mentioning over here. But that's okay. Now you do know these names, and I seriously suggest you do a little googling mm -hmm. and find out who we are. I mean, you know what we are. Well, here's the thing that most people don't understand is that. We existed, my career existed before there was an internet. So not everything I have is on the internet. And you've got to keep that in mind by my age, what we've done. Not all of that makes it to the internet. Not all of it makes it there. So you, you're looking at the internet as a god because it's all, everything's on there. So it's like, it reminds me of like that uh, commercial where the, the, this guy walks up and he's obviously not a Frenchman and he's about to take this young lady out. You know, yeah. you know he's, he's what he is. Oh, because I read it on the internet. I mean, you know, that's how ridiculous it is. Anybody can get on there. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of, I've got a book coming out, it's called Ninjas Are Bravo Sierra, okay, which is code for bullshit. But uh, I, yeah, we, 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 we so I don't want the title to be Ninjas or BS, man. I want the title to be Ninjas or Bullshit. Well, and, 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 and exactly. And, this is, and then say underneath the subtitle will be, Got an issue? Bring it. You know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's anyways. The name of the book, the initial work of the book, was called "Ninjas of Bullshit." Yeah. Um, the manipulation of perception, racketeering, and racism in martial arts. My book really documents how they created, starting with like the ninja, starting this myth from the and, and turned a, what is a esoteric form of add-on curricula to a samurai's warfare. In other words. The samurai would learn many weapons. One of the weapons is, is a certain form of strategy on how to collect information, uh, how to prevent information being collected on them, and that was called ninjutsu. And you will see it in the Tenshin, uh, Tenshin Katori Shinto Ru, the oldest school in Japan uh, on uh, of swordsmanship, and you will see that uh, they have ninjutsu in their curriculum, which means that they have a curriculum. What is that? What's the significance of that? Is this, guys? There is no such thing as ninja fighting styles. Get that out of your head. Ta -da. People, people who would learn ninjutsu already were bushi. They were already skilled warriors. They were already samurai. There's a, in order to create money, a market, a market, and add some glow to it. They created this idea that ninja were separate from from yeah, well, the, it's from not the samurai, not and that's not true, necessarily true. Some were. And sometimes they were. That's when the Tokugawa shogun came into power, and there were no samurai really around, and there were you saw a huge amount of ronin in there taking with the swords. But this is all discussed in my book, and I, I cite what's really in the scrolls, what they really say, what the governments and boards of education have to say on the matter, and I expose how this this uh, fra consumer fraud has been carried out to the tune of billions of dollars, and that's why I was okay locked out with contracts actually forbidding mention of me in magazines, although I have all these accomplishments under yeah. my belt, uh, which, by the way, outweighed anything they could do, and that's why Bloodsport came about, because my accomplishments spoke for me ahead of anything that any magazine or people trying to control information. And that's really important to note, because people will try to control the flow of information, and the type of information, but eventually it always leaks out. A good example, and I hate to say this, is World War II. People refused to believe the Holocaust was happening as it was occurring. That's right. They just refused to believe it. They thought, oh, it's just too exaggeration. It's wild. How could that happen? Taking people, entire communities on trains, factories of death. Please don't, don't. And we know from history today that that is true. So in, in that vein, in that light, I think you'll enjoy the book, I think you'll enjoy the, the, the learning the truth, and you'll learn also from in this book, and I really shed a light on the people who spun the truth, that which is a new first. I'm talking about who was really behind these aliases, M.C. Boostman, who was behind the alias, you know, uh, C, CYQ fonts, all these so-called authorities, and when that's you right, see who they right. really are, right. and what their positions really were, I think you're about to be not only shocked, but disgusted. 
and uh, you can really uh, learn from this, not to believe, like I said, everything you read on the internet, and question the sources. I mean, the LA Times said I bought my trophy and all this. Well, you know what? The only source for the LA Times when I got to court in a, in a proceedings of uh, libel and slander, guess what? All goes back to the reporter. And who benefited from that story? The reporter, because he had a sensational story. That's it. Wait a minute. Let me yeah. ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. I'm not asking, but let me ask you to tell them about tell them about the project you and I are oh, uh, well, collaborating, which is going to be. What? I don't. You know, you want to look for words, don't use the word awesome. We don't want to use the word awesome, but it's going to be pretty straight ahead, man. You know, well, what it is, is a, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a philosopher. Hold on for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As he leaves, what? he retreats. <laughs> yeah, right, man. Right. So anyway, so we don't have any dead time here. I'm, I'm going to speak right now. Uh, okay, and that is one of the things that comes up. I'm a philosopher uh, in, mar in, in martial arts. So is um, you know, Hanchi Kaufman. I'm going to use the word Hanchi, even though he, he said not to worry about it. And that's because we're pretty learned. We, we've studied many of all the other philosophers, and we've come up with our own theories on, on what is the, the kundin in, in, in many systems, the secret, the secret haiku. And we're going to combine our efforts and understandings to make a really, I think, an awesome book. Well, yeah. we're going to talk. I'm back. About, <laughs> we're going to talk about the philosophy and the, um, you know, and, well, and how it changes you That's as a martial arts. A multi-dimensional training. Because what happens in, in, and I'm going to share this. Most people don't even know what really mean. What's what makes something a martial art? Uh, and it has to have three components. And this is important. And this is, by the way, for all you guys who are <laughs> ninjutsu guys who, go, go. who, 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 who want to know why ninjutsu is not a martial art. Okay, it's, it's very simple. A martial art, a budo, has to have three components. First component is called tension. It has to have a specific structured order. The hand goes here, the foot goes here. I move this way, I move this way. Whatever it is, you, you see it in kata, uh, very, very much so. So that's, that's number one. Number two is called tension. Tension is is the emotional content in which the technique is delivered. Is it calm? Is it hard? Is it explosive? This is very, very important to the training. And that's another part that's a, a, that's a component. And the last thing is Kundun, which is the secrets. It has a secret underlying um, you know, philosophy that makes everything all-encompassing within the style. So you can look within the style to answer problems that are, that are beyond just the physical. Ninjutsu you can practice without any of those three. You can have one, two, or, 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 or one in a comedy. That's why it's not considered a martial art. So with that understood, now we have a real definition of what is a martial art, what isn't a martial art. And I always get in, find it interesting how many people say, oh, that's martial arts. I say, well, do you even know what martial art or Budo really that's is? Right. That's right. They don't. Another they thing don't. that I have to understand is that just because you like read the rings, just because you read Sun Tzu, regardless of whose interpretation, and mine happened to be acknowledged as most popular, the most popular and the best, there's got to be a reason for that. Yeah. A lot of people are under the impression that by taking the meanings that they read based on their experiences, they can put that into their lives. It doesn't work that way. Why it doesn't work that way is very simple. Once you learn a concept, you know it. You know a concept. To know it is one thing. But to inculcate it into your psyche, you know, then you come to realize that this is an aspect of your being until it becomes no thing. No thing is when you don't even have to think about it anymore. You just merely not act it out. You are it. Okay? So what we're going to do, Frank is going to be putting like his techniques and all of his ideas and strategies together and I'm going to be expounding on it with the philosophical understanding and treatments from Sun Tzu, Musashi, and myself. Okay? So this will give them plenty to work with. And mine's more, more uh, tangible in the sense of um, what you might call verbal judo. Uh, and we're going to expand on how that relates That's to right. ancient philosophy That's right. and how it interrelates. How, how in, in, What's really nice about it is you really get through the book, you'll get to understand how I arrived at where I am in the sense of certain things that I talk about in my book uh, and, and in my works. Um, most of you will never ever see my works. They're really reserved, they're classified 
for certain certain people based That's on right. a need to know. And I want to make that very clear. Um, you know, good example of that is you know the Navy SEAL Spec War Manual obviously is not out there in public use. I am named as a source contributor for that manual, uh, and I'm not going to elaborate on what I put in and what I didn't put in. Uh, but the important thing is, is that we can take the lessons that you put in the physical, we can apply it to the, uh, from a tangible world, physically doing something, to the ethereal world of how we can do combat, but on a different plane. Exactly. See, what, one of the things you have to understand is, aside from the studies that you did as a youth, okay, mm -hmm. who you were studying with, and the same goes for myself, having trained primarily on Okinawa, coming back through Japan, getting involved with Japan Karate Association, coming back into New York, I was in a situation, we didn't have anybody here. I think I've explained this any number of times. So we would go around, we, meaning myself and other uh, contemporaries at the time, we'd go around to each other's schools. All right? There weren't fancy schools, and we didn't practice martial arts, we practiced karate, as simple as that. And we would learn from each other. So how we developed, essentially, and here it is, truth be told, we taught ourselves. Okay, and I think you also got involved with that. And, 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 yeah. And, and, also, yeah. Yeah. and the thing what happened was as that developed, we went through all the machinations and the psychological implications of what we were doing until we had to turn around and say, well, what am I doing? What is all this about? Some of us went into the ring, some of us went into like the uh, philosophical aspect, and a great number went into the bottle. Unfortunate, but true. Because when you start playing around with higher concepts, and you start trying to understand what the great masters taught and did, you can't. You can't. Why? Because you weren't there, number one. All you can do is read the words that were put on paper by other people trying to explain what they think had happened. Which is why, and this is what the uh, secret of the uh, rings is and my uh, Art of War is, I studied it and I knew it, okay? So I mean, when I went through the different Musashi books, I'm reading, uh, reading, a friend of mine is reading exactly what the kanji is saying, and, and looks at me and says, yeah, that's what it says, that's not what it means. And how did we know it's not what it meant is because we were living it. Now, I mean, I can start dropping names like, from like the middle 50s oh, 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 to oh, the early oh, 60s, you know? I want to jump, jump in on this yeah. topic point. Go ahead. Koru training. Real training in Japan, by the way, is not instruction by the teacher telling you this or this or this. This is the interesting thing about when you're being self-taught. Actually, if you're self-taught, you're, you're, you're actually being taught the correct way. Because in Japan, the Koru schools don't come out and say, okay, foot goes here, hand goes here. You're expected to watch and follow along. The reason for that, and they do that, is because you're supposed to evolve. It's part of the evolutionary process. And as things go on, you might, when I was talking about Kundin, you'll hear yeah. a lot. The Kundin can be something as simple as a haiku. But as you do everything, all of a sudden, that will become the, the revelation, the secret of that. The revealization. Will, the, the right, revealation. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, right? The revelization of that will, will come through, will come through you that way. And that's how you become defined as yourself. Okay. Exactly. Well, you mentioned haiku. Okay. Here's the time for a commercial. Uh, my book, Homage for Miyamoto Musashi, which consists of 122 haiku, is being published. It was picked up by a publisher, and it should be out, I think, around, the, what is this, what, this is 14. It should be out around, like, the first quarter of 2015. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know I'm one of your biggest fans, right? Here. Absolutely. No, what it is is yeah. all 122 haiku are based on the rings, based on the segments of the rings, earth, water, fire, air, or wind, and no thing, not nothing. I've been over this 100,000 times with you, Peter right, right? Nothing is something by definition. No thing goes beyond the definition. And that's what the true void is, if you want to call it a void, okay? Wait for that. So what I did is I just got myself into a state, <laughs> right? Okay? And I'm just doing classical 575 form, boom, thinking about earth, thinking about water, thinking about fire, and it all just came together. And I sent it out to a whole number of publishers who said, what is this, you know, poetry? But then somebody, the publisher out there, there are some publishers out there who have functioning brains, by the way, and they took a look at it and said, whoa, 
this has not just got to do with karate or the martial arts or the fire. It's about a life thing. So this is going to be made available. I'll be dropping individual haiku on my Facebook page. Okay? And you'll have a chance to see what's coming. Okay? Another thing that we're getting involved with here is we talk about the Hanshi Essential Park. Yeah. And after this, we're, I'm going to take the camera. We're going to go over to Han my Hanshi Central Park Dojo, okay? And uh, that is such a great place for me to go. I get there early in the morning. Nobody's there. I don't take the iron. I take my bokeh, okay, or my side, whatever it is I'm working with. And I go for a good half hour, 40 minutes. That's it. At my tender age, I don't have to go two hours and make myself crazy. Man. But I make sure that on my way over to the park, I pick up my coffee. <laughs> with my Danish. I mean, I mean, this is it. I now look at the martial arts. I don't even like the martial arts. I, don't it. I now look at what I'm doing as my pleasure. My pleasure. Not, gee, I'm having fun doing this yet. I actually have come to a point in my being where I really, really get off on it. It's not, oh, oh don't want you to do that. Later for that, it's meaningless. <laughs> So what you have got to strive for, and you know, you're going to probably smile at this one, I got very lucky for my birthday. The creative power of the universe came down and blessed me. It says, all right, we're getting rid of your adulthood, <laughs> and I'm going to reinstate your childhood. Right? Awesome. And, I, and I'm, ju I'm just really having a good time, okay? There's nothing to get hung about. Was it Lennon said that, strawberry fields forever? So this is what it's all about. You're talking here, we're, we're talking, you're looking at two legit icons. Can I use that? You're, yeah. much, you're much more visible than I am because of the things that you've been involved with. Now what's happening is like a lot of people are turning around and say, well, wait a minute, man. What did Hachi do? Meaning myself, you know? And they're looking at it, and now they want to know, you folks as well, how did I get to this stage? I can lay it out, I'm sure you can lay it out how you got to this stage, and it's got nothing to do with what we thought we would become. I agree with you. You understand what I'm saying? Why did it happen? Take, to, it, take it up with the authorities. Right? Well, I think, I think yeah. it really comes down to yeah. life unfolds differently than we expect. That's right. So it's sort of like a, a packed sheet in a way. You, just as you, when you think you're going to make a fold go this way, it might go this way. And then before you know it, the whole blanket is exposed. Don't want to get into this fate and free will thing, which I, you know, everybody yells at me when I start talking to them. I say, hey, there's no such thing as fate and free will. Which well, is a little well, it's an esoteric discussion, but yeah, for, another not time, go, yeah. for another time. Yeah. But what, what I want to say is that um, <laughs> martial arts, true martial arts yeah. study, is an evolution. And that's true with everyone. And that's why it's ridiculous for people to sit down and say, well, you're not real. or you're How can you say what's real and not real when you're involved in something that's supposed to be evolutionary? You're supposed to evolve with it. It's not arriving at a fixed point. This is a linear form of thinking. This is Western thinking, where you go from point A to point B. Asian, the Asian culture, the Eastern mindset, you want to call it that, is circular in its thinking. In the beginning is the end. The end is the beginning. So it's a whole different way of looking at things. In fact, last night we were having a discussion about um, warfare. We are discussing about different things and how to handle situations. And one gentleman said, well, everything's a chess game. You know, and I said, I disagree. Oh, yeah, and this was funny. This was funny. And, and, and he was a first-class warrior, force Marine Con, recon guy with tours overseas back. We we're having this, this discussion. Uh, his name is Zoltan, he's in the his security yeah, business yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Heavy, duty. Uh, heavy duty guy, very serious. And, I, and he says, well, how can you say that? It's a chess game, it's all about strategy. I said, no, the, the, the difference in the strategy is, your strategy is a strategy of, att of attrition. It's about destroying and taking as many things to, do, to capitulate the response. My strategy in dealing with things is more like go. Use the minimal amount of pieces, but contain the threat. That's what the difference is in Asian martial arts from Western martial arts. It's that simple. And to order to contain the threat and use the minimal amount of pieces, that requires you evolving as a human being. Because any idiot can pick up a gun and shoot somebody. 
Let's which is solve, to solve an argument. <laughs> to solve an argument. It takes yeah. a really highly developed person to turn around to somebody and diffuse that argument without, without using any kind of weapon at all, diffuse the threat using intellect, reason, under compassion, um, and understanding what you're dealing with. And yeah. the last time, and, but, yeah. but with one caveat, when you're dealing with a psychopath, you also have the knowledge you know, you that, know. You, that know. you have you to act and are willing to act because, again, you've evolved. You've, you've evolved to the point saying, the cancer's got to go. And that's it. See, the practice of like being at peace at all times is very, very nice. But the true practitioner of peace is also very well equipped to do business. Choosing to walk in peace rather than choosing to walk as a psycho, okay? And this right. is the big thing. So if you're in a situation that you can't defuse for whatever reason, don't make it a project. End it. Okay, that now that's a, that's the whole thing. It's not like, hey, I can do this, I can do that. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay, the only person who should care is you, and that's based on pure selfishness. We got into this. Pure selfishness means that everything you do is for your benefit. Yeah, but at the same, and we're not talking greed. If you're doing everything for yourself, then you have absolutely no problem giving it to other people so they can perhaps have the same, you know, well, here's the peace in their lives. I, I have a theory, and, and, yeah. and there's a difference between selfishness and self-fullness. Okay. Well, it's pure selfishness and pure selfishness. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. No. And, and, my, and, and again, this is one of the things that we'll be discussing in our book, yeah. and why it's going to be interesting. One of the things I'm going to lay out is what I call the ABCs of warriorship. Certain things that you can just memorize from A to Z that can, that really transforms you as a person. So, uh, and that'll be in the book. Yeah. So, so, so and and Master Coffin will be talking about. It. So it's going to be a, question, question, a question. powerful book. One last subject that we're going to do the book as a hard as paper. We're also do it as e, but we're also going to do the book as a DVD. Well, I don't know about that. Wait, 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 wait. Not. We'll do some of it. We're, we're that's a discussion. Yeah. To like show you the moves in action with a voice over kind of thing. In some cases, yeah. Not not the whole thing, obviously. Yeah. You know. And we're cases. gonna sell it, and it's gonna have a nice hefty price on it because we're entitled, excuse me. Okay. But aside from that, see again we're, we make light of what we're doing. We make light of what we're doing. Notice the tango is is being very cool here because Tango the parrot knows that these guys are talking serious. So you'll excuse me for a second. I'm going to get Tango to bring them in. Sure. sure. Bring, 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 bring. This is the real author behind uh, uh, his book. Yeah, yeah, tell him. Yeah. Put him yeah. in yeah. this one. Man. If you don't understand his work, you're going to have to do a little brain. No problem. So, <laughs> no problem. Tango. Come on, Bob. Right? Come on, he's Here he comes. Which is amazing to see this 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 bird. It's, it is like a little person. It's a person, after you, yeah. Right. After you get to know him, he, he really is. That's Tango, that guys. Yeah. Yeah. This is Tango. Hey, Tango. How you doing? Hey, Tango. What's going on? Here? I'd hold you, but I think you want to be with you. You a good boy? He's, he's, he's watching the camera. Look at that. Here's the camera, man. Smile. This is the true author. There you go. That's right. You told him. No, you yeah. Okay. He's shy, he's not going to talk, but that's okay too. He probably goes, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. His favorite landing place. So he whispers in his ear and he tells him what's really going on. Is, what, what, <laughs> what do you mean, how do you do that? Ah! Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, so I hope you have enjoyed this little uh, yeah, yeah. romp through. Uh, we're we're going to go to. Right now we're going to take off and go see the dojo of Central Park. Where That's the right. of Central Park actually exists, and uh, I do, I do. You know, it's amazing. amazing. And we're going to see some. Uh, some it's amazing. Boo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever it is, yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. So um, yeah, well, we could just talk a little more until that thing goes beep beep beep, and that way we, uh, we'll be able to do the whole. Thing right. for the for Hachi's world for the show, and then we'll just you know, I'll clean it up and put it up on YouTube. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and feel free. Oh wait, wait. You want to get in touch with? 
Aren't you Dukes? If you want to get in touch with me, go to Frank W. Dukes on Facebook or Hanshi, H A N S H I F R A N K D U X at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Or you can look up, put up your Dukes 329 at AOL.com. That's Cotty. She arranges my schedule. Wonderful person. Keeps me organized. You can get in touch with me through the, through her. Uh, and there's also a Put Up Your Dukes 329 page on Facebook. And that is, will tell you what's coming up, upcoming events, etc. Okay, you can get a hold of me. You know how to do that. Hanshi Kaufman, H A N S H I K A U F M A N, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Hanshi's World at gmail.com. Uh, you know, my website is hanshi.com. You go up there, you see a listing of all the books. If you want to order the books, I'm making it easier for people. You want to order the books. Tell his, tell his parents, hey, this is guy is well learned. He knows what he's doing. There you go. We're done. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so let's take it out. Is it done? No, that's done. We were still rolling. Oh, we're still rolling. We're still rolling. Yeah. We're still rolling. We're still I, rolling. Like, we're still rolling. By the way, did I tell you what happened? <laughs> yeah, right. The other day, uh, Monday, I was uh, with a couple of new guys. We were over at one of the rehearsal studios on West 36th. And I hadn't played with these guys before. They hadn't played with me. And uh, we said, what tunes do we play? Now, I've been playing since they invented the music kind of a thing, you know? And he said, Steve, what tune do you want to play? And I go like this. I can't think of a tune. Mm. Okay? So I take it to the drummer. I says, okay, start playing. Right. So he's, <laughs> what, wait, what, should I, what should I play? Mm -hmm. What the hell do I know? So we just had hung out for a little bit and then we just start doodling around. This is the first time we could play with each other. And about an hour and a half later, we're really cooking over there, so it was real nice. We're going to take that to the next step. I'd like to do a, uh, you know, a CD. Like that. All, all I can all 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 say, me and music, me and music, just so you know, I couldn't carry a tune if you tattooed it to my back. Dave, Nailed it, stapled it, glued it. Forget it. Did yeah. Any, any plus, else? yeah, plus I'm, I'm working on uh, screenplay mm -hmm. with Hanshi Central Park. Yeah. Okay. I got three other books in the can that are ready to go to press. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you're prolific. I mean, that's yeah, well, sure. you gotta do it. You gotta do something. All right, that's it. Listen, thanks very much for putting up with this. And I mean it because you know, to sit here and listen to two great masters is very intimidating. You gotta, you know, tell where it's at. Well, I, I, listen, I didn't wear my I don't, I don't call today. myself a master. I want to make this real clear. Ah, I'm, I'm, ah, I'm, ah, I'm, ah, I'm a traveler ah, in life, and I've got a lot of great experiences, and I'm right. happy to share them with other people and, and, and the wisdom that comes with it. So that's that's my who I am, just so you know. Yeah. You want to address us? You can address us as sensei. I think it's a little inappropriate for them to like say, "Hey Frank, hey Steve, how you doing?" That's but that's another thing. If it's a social situation, go. You know, we're people too. You know, unbelievable. I know to some of you, but like we're, we're just like plain folks. And now we're at that point in our lives, we don't have a problem being plain. Because we know who we are and what we've done. And that's it. Listen, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Okay? And feel free to share this video wherever you want. It's up on YouTube. It's what do you call it? Creative Commons or something. Yeah. Yeah. Knock yourself out. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Thank bye you. bye. There you go. Here's some really good stuff. Huh? Who's